Hey guys, welcome back. Candace here. So, um, the footage that we're going to see today was taped with the last video. All that work was done in the same bonsai work session. It just got to be too much footage. Oh my God. Can you see the snow is all the way up to the window line there? That's a, there's a few feet. This is why a lot of times I don't lose all of my snow until the first week in June. <laughs> okay. But, um, so all of this footage that we're going to see today was filmed with that first part of the landscape challenge. So this is the second part today. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to go in and put together the water feature. Hopefully that one works. Um, that was a little bit improvised. We'll see like lots of things. We'll just have to see how it turns out and we can always, you know, change our plans. And then we're also going to be choosing some understory ground cover plants to put into the um, landscape that we have created thus far. And then um, the third episode, which I'm going to actually start working on today, is going to be the final detail work, putting the water feature into the actual landscape composition and doing a lot of that detail work. Um, and then, and the tree pruning and all of the remainder to just kind of tie that whole piece and, you know, polish it off, polish it up. Um, I do hope you guys enjoyed the drum lesson between Bobcat and I, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I am proud to say that I now know how to use my Dremel. Um, that was taped after the footage that we did the other day, thus there's a lot of comments of me in the last video of not being able to use my Dremel and needing Dremel lessons. So he stepped forward before that call for help even went out. But now no tree in my collection is safe. And if a tree starts to misbehave, I'm just going to show it my Dremel. But stay tuned this spring. I see a lot of wood carving and um, just getting used to using that Dremel tool. Um, since up until this point, I've been using, you know, hand carving, hand carving tools. But before we continue, though, let's open up a package that I had gotten. All right. So the the package today arrived from Steve's Backyard Bonsai, my good friend over there, who is doing phenomenal with his trees. Um, saw him, watched him working on a boxwood this morning. I think it's, from what I can tell, it looks like a Japanese boxwood. And let's see what Steve sent us. Ooh. It's a secret hidden. We gotta untwist it. I love my sound effects. Okay. Hi, Candace. I love these chopsticks for untangling fine roots and for pulling stubborn sphagnum moss away from air layered material. They're rosewood and super hard and pointy. You know, super hard pointy chopsticks are always a plus and probably much better than the ones I get from going to eat sushi. Um, they are far better for bonsai than for consuming Asian food. <laughs> <laughs> I should have read on. Thanks, Steve. Um, thanks again for your support. Steve from Steve's Backyard Bonsai. Ooh. I think I'm going to tear open the top and maybe try to pull them out. Ooh, they are very pointy and hard. Come on. Let me pull them up the probably easier if we cut the big end and pull it out on that side versus try to pull the big part out of the little side. Wow. These are some super nice chopsticks. I'm, I'm not going to use them to eat my Asian food though, but I am slightly tempted. Um, yeah. These are going to be phenomenal. They're so nice though, like, I don't even wanna get them wet or dirty. Thank you, Steve. Great chopsticks. 
They sure are gonna help me pick out sphagnum from the air layers that we're gonna do out in nature this spring. So these are going to be treasured. But all right, so let's get on with today's work. So this is the part where I say, I have no idea what I'm doing, but we're gonna do it anyways. And I'm still not uncomfortable because the worst that's gonna happen is it's gonna turn out looking like crap and we go to a plan B or we learn from what went right and what went wrong and we change up what we do. So for this portion, we're gonna create silicone waterfall and a silicone water feature. Um, to do that, I have some leftover silicone that was also warming. It's really hard and I don't think it's supposed to be <laughs> this hard. It was from not last year, but the year before. So it's probably a bit expired and that's probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> but um, I used it to create some purple silicone wine in a wine glass as a accent for the Japata Kaba the first year I showed it. Um, so we have our point, our one in, and we mix them and then we figure out what kind of color we want. Um, you know, my goal for 2023 was to not say um, but I use that word to like, let my mouth catch up with the thoughts in my head. So, <laughs> but, which I don't do if I public speak. So that's weird, but it could be because those are prepared speeches and this is just talking to you guys. But, um, so what I did was I created first a, a tinfoil mold. So I have a very, very expensive, hard to find Smucker's jelly container and I took some tin foil and I pressed it into our stone feature. It's not going to be a perfect cascading fit once we kind of put it on there, but water in a waterfall is never perfect. Um, so I want to straighten that part up just a little. And then a lip here so it can kind of come down and then we'll have the silicone kind of pool. And I made some ripples and ridges in the tin foil. So hopefully it will set like that. And then hopefully we'll be able to remove the tin foil from the um, silicone basing. And when I was thinking about what kind of color or colorant do I want? Well, we definitely want blue. And do we want it to be like a true real replica? Um, and I'm thinking, no, I'm thinking, let's go with something that looks a little surreal. Some of those really beautiful waterfalls that people take photographs of. Um, so this does not go clear. It's more of a matte whiter, whiter base without being white, um, but not a clear, clear silicone base. So I did grab some blue because I know we obviously want it to be <laughs> some pretty, pretty, pretty bright, bright blue. Um, I grabbed a little green and I also grabbed some black just in case we need a little bit more depth because when you look at water, it's not generally all one color unless you're with me on my favorite island um, at Peanut Island because that water is crystal clear, barely blue, see-through. <laughs> um, but we den gen definitely want to add like a splash of color into our water. So I'm going to try to get this mixed up. I'm going to go on caffeinated mode because I'm not sure how long this is going to take to mix it up, but it's generally going to be a one to one ratio. Um, and it only has a 25 minute cure time. So we're gonna pour gently cause we want it to kind of build on top of each other, not just be like one big conglomerate blob. And that's where I'm worried about that this might have hardened off too much to actually do a drip, but let's go see. So if you saw, I just switched to a plan B for creating our silicone waterfall. Um, the one port, port, the one part of the silicone to mix in to harden it had, was completely dry. So I could not do that. So what else hardens clear? Now granted, this might not work because I don't know how Elmer's glue mixes. <laughs> with silicone part A, but I at least know it does dry clear. 
and it does dry. Um, so before it gets, I want some natural streaking in here. It's definitely turning a blue green, but I'm going to start doing the drizzle work. Is this going to work? Yeah, I don't know. All right. Because this is the part that we can always trim down. And I want this to be thick enough to get the tinfoil off. Drip, 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 do its thing. That is awful light blue. I don't know. What if we... All right, so now our hopeful water waterfall and the silicone portion here is going to set. Um, that's a big unknown at this point, but it should. It should. The set time might be a little longer. It's going to peel off. All right, so I'm gonna go set this in a safe place where it can um, where it can set, and then I'm going to start mucking and adding the understory plants now. We are back with our planting, and when we're talking about what kind of understory plants that we are going to put with this, we wanna make sure that they pair okay um, with the trees that we are putting in the forest. So if these were tropical trees, I would definitely have gone for mosses because the mosses will grow very, very well with the higher water needs and the moisture. And during the winters, moss and algae grow <laughs> extremely well in the tropical tent. But these are not tropicals. They could probably be treated as tropicals, but I want to keep this whole piece as something that I can keep in a regular living area without having to worry about that. So for my understory plants, what grows maybe around a lagoon or a water area is going to be, um, you know, your fern type understories. So we're going to disseminate some of these that have also been living in the regular house area and start filling this in. And we're also going to be starting to muck and fill this because I don't need that silicone to go the water feature to go all the way to the bottom of it. It just needs to kind of sit around along the top of it. Um, so how is that going to be put together yet? I, I don't know because we have to wait to see if that water feature actually does set since we had to um, improvise quite a bit. I don't know what the chemical base is of the one part of the silicone and I don't know if the Elmer's glue that I put in is going to be able to solidify it enough where or is it gonna stay liquidy and sticky? I, I don't know. I did a one-to-one -one ratio, but we're just gonna to have to give that piece time to dry out and see what happens. Um, so, I picked, oh, I went and grabbed, I have a few pots like this, these big kind of round ones. And what I do is I take pieces from the accent pieces that I have put together the year before um, that summer before um, other forest plantings and I put them in a big bowl and as you can see they grow so we have these red stemmed pearl it's a baby tears type red st I think if you look up red stem pearl or red stem baby tears you'll find them um, and then we also have a boatload of this overgrowing low-lying fern which I'm going to put probably as the base of the entire um, forest piece and then maybe work some of this in in certain areas. Um, I do have some of that red stuff in the middle too. That was not easy to grow. It was not, it was not good. It was not good. 
Um, but yeah, let's get to mucking. Mucking and woo! We are not going to go in and prune any of these trees until actually we have completed the entire composition. So I'm going to start with, I want to get in some sand in this water area then. And I'm just using some, I don't know, stone granules that I had sitting on hand when I searched through everything that we could possibly use without having to have leave the house. So I'm going to go into fast mode, caffeinated mode. So our pot has been mucked up. Now, when we muck the top of something, whether that's for a root over rock or a landscape creation or any other thing, what we're going to do is we're going to be watering using a mister until things have been kind of locked in place and because you don't want to disrupt that. So muck can be a little bit finicky. If it gets too dry, it's going to um, just kind of crack and roll off if it stays, you know, if, it, if you water it with a can or a sprayer sprayer, then it's just going to erode away. So this piece, until things have kind of set into place, will be watered with the sprayer. Um, again, we have not pruned any of these trees, so it's hard to get a good visual. But now let's go ahead and start adding our ferns. All right, guys, so it is cleanup time, but we have most of the understory ferns planted, and what these guys do, because it is planted fairly sparsely, is they put out little trailers with little roots, and they keep running. So they are a true ground cover type fern, miniature fern looking plant. Um, so what I did was I took pieces and I mucked it up first because I needed a place to press the pieces in um, so they could start to adhere. And then we're going to keep the top of this very misted so that those guys can um, grow hold. But this is where we're at right now. We're not done. When we come back, hopefully we will then finish, hopefully the water feature sets but even if it doesn't I feel like this does look kind of cool but I won't be happy until it works even if we have to completely go back to ground zero and do this again so this is the end of day one and on the next episode then we will check on the water feature see how that's going, finish this up and add some of our special detail work then. But all right, I hope you guys are having fun and have fun with your bonsai.